Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Albert Reynoso. He used to be my producer, and I used to be a big shot. So You're still a big shot. I'm a big shot. Still a big shot? Yeah, sure. sure. A you, a huge YouTube uh, following, from what I hear. Oh, really? Incredible yeah. YouTube following? Right, right. You're what's called an influencer. Oh, really? And what is it exactly that I'm influencing? Uh, I don't know, but that's what you are. Yeah. It means you get free stuff, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's all it means, really. Yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, you were mentioning to me when we were not doing this that you're cooking ribs right now. I am cooking ribs. I will have been cooking ribs some time ago. Okay. In reality. How long do your... Now, do, what, do you do your ribs in the oven? I do them in the oven, yes. Okay, because I don't know if you have, like, you know, grill outdoors or whatever. Okay. I don't care to grill, no. You know why? Because if I grill, the grill is about four yards from my oven and stove. Why do I need to do that? And have to clean the Just grill it after yeah, it's through. Clean the grill. Yeah. I have an oven and stove four yards away from the grill, so uh, okay. I'm not using the grill. Ever. Now, let's compare, because I make ribs too. I don't know. Have you ever had my ribs? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, uh, but I make excellent ribs. I've developed this over years and years and years of experience to where, okay. it, it, I mean, a bottom line, it all depends on whether you get good meat or not. Yes, I, I don't get the St. Louis style ribs. I get the loin. Which is what she said. Uh, right. Anyway, now I get the St. Louis type, but tell me how it's you... fattier the St. Louis uh, this the St. Louis. Well, actually, I get a baby backs, which are. It, I I I've been told that baby backs are a misnomer. That they don't really exist. That they're simply regular ribs that are cut shorter or something. Yeah, I think I think that's the loin ribs. That's the end of the loin ribs, which are shorter. The shorter end the of short the ribs. But anyway, ribs go from big to small. How do you make yours? Uh, I, I'm doing it uh, two ways. I used to do it uh, two and a half hours at 300 and then a half an hour at 400. And in that 400 half hour, I'd sauce the one side 15 minutes and sauce the other side for 15 minutes. But what I'm doing now is four and a half hours at 275. And then after that time, I uh, sauce the ribs Put them under the broiler for a couple minutes and done. Okay. Longer cooking now. Okay. Here's mine. Okay. Uh, first of all, I take the ribs and I you put them. Parboil them? No. Oh, you don't. No, I used to, and I found that does not is not good. Because what it does, it sucks all the juice out of the ribs. Yeah, you're getting rid of the fat. You're you, getting rid of yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's just not... A good idea. I thought it was one time. They said, "Oh, that's a great idea. You should do that." No, it softens the ribs. No question about it. It softens uh, them. I mean the meat. Yeah, yeah. But uh, if you do them long, cook them for a long time, you will get ribs that will fall off the bone as well. Okay. Right. Okay. So what I do is I put a rub on the ribs. I oil them up and put rub on the ribs. As I do. Yeah. And then I put them in foil. As I do. And tightly seal them. As I do. Uh, yes, as you do. Just copying me, aren't you? Anyway, and then... then Good I, mind. Then I stick them in at uh, uh, 320, uh, 325 degrees. Yeah, 325 degrees. And I let them cook for about 20 minutes. And then I turn the oven down to 225. Okay. And then I let them cook for another hour and 20 minutes at that. 
That's it? Wait a minute. Okay. Then I take them out of the oven and take out of the foil. Out of the foil. Okay. Right. And then lay them down on top of the pan that's cooking them yeah, and yeah. put them back in for another hour. Okay. Okay. So that's about two and a half hours total. No, uh, at this point, no, it's 120, 140. Uh, uh, it's uh, 240 so far. Okay. okay. And then that's what I said, two and, and a half hours. And then I take them out and I put the sauce on them. Right. Okay. Called and saucing the ribs. Saucing the ribs. And then right. I put them back into the oven. For, Again. For okay. another. Two, for, 40 and then another half hour. Another half hour. So that's 310. It's 310. Okay. Then what I and do what, is What I temperature is that last half hour? Huh? What temperature is it's that last half hour? It's still 225. It's still 225. 225. It's pretty low. Pretty low. Yeah. I mean, I'm doing I'm literally cooking the ribs slowly. Okay. So mm -hmm. then I take the ribs and I uh, uh, pull them out and put some more sauce on the top put them back in but then I turn on the broiler mm -hmm. okay and I let the broiler broil them for about 10 minutes until I see they're bubbling and what happens is it starts to brown the ribs kind of in right. a nice little right and then I take them out and that's that's you, just for a couple of minutes you can't leave that long. I do that for about 10 minutes tops 10 minutes yeah very very tops yeah uh, and then I pull them out and uh, I eat them and they're delicious. Very so good. how does that Indeed. sound to you? Does that that, sound, that, sound, that sounds equivalent to what it's I It's like you, you do, only yeah. perhaps at different uh, temperatures. Many more, many more steps, yeah. And my, my question now is this. The two of us has, have just spoken about ribs. By the way, by the way, this can now be, I guess, submitted to the Emmys for a, as a cooking show today. Well, you could if there were going to be any Emmys, but I hear the Emmys have been yet, yet yeah. again postponed yes, by the strikes right, of right. whoever is striking right. this week. I don't know. Yeah. But the ribs, the ri we were talking about ribs, and the ribs are the bones, right, of the of the thing. Yeah. And we both we both said that it, the meat falls off the bone. Why do we bother with ribs if we don't want the bones at all? Yeah, but you they can't get the bones you can't all get, off the bones. You can't get the meat off the bone until you cook them. What kind? Well, what kind of technology have we accomplished then? If we can't well, do that, well, go to McDonald's. Then they have the McRib sandwich. Ah, the McRib. I love the <laughs> that McRib. That doesn't have any rib in it. No, no. And why would they call it the McRib? They should call it the McNo Rib, shouldn't they? Yeah, they should call it. The, this has got no rib. Well, the it's, Mc, it's the Mc. Oh, they could, they could well, call it cooked pork. Yeah, that's what it could. is. You know. Huh. Interesting. Do you know? Have you heard that the cultured meat is starting starting up now? Cultured meat. Cultured meat, which is, I guess, um, meat that's made in a in a, uh, in a in a in a kind of test tube meat. Oh, 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 test tube. Yes, I know about. The, I saw about the test so tube. Not, meat. The FDA yeah. has given approval for two companies to create cultured chicken, which yeah. has been yeah. taste tested and is said to be identical to the real dead bird but when so you go to eat said, it if you know that it is that yeah you're going to imagine even if it tastes exactly the same you're going to imagine some difference in taste not me if, if it prevents an animal from being not killed you? i'm fine with it really okay yeah. well i i'm 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 with you you know but I'm fine with it. I, I'm looking forward to the day when there are no more cows because the only thing we use them for is to eat. Who would want who would want a cow outside your house? I mean, who, who's going to want that? There won't be you're any right, cows. You're right. There no is, need for cows it, whatsoever. Yeah. yeah you know. Pigs, maybe. People still like pigs. You're not going to have a cow as a pet. No, never. You never. Know, maybe if you're some kid on a farm, you might call bossy yeah. a, a pet, but. But yeah. once we get the cultured meat and the cultured milk, and, and already well, here, the well, here's the thing about meat. I don't know if you've decided this like I have. Meat today tastes terrible. I mean, it's really horrible. It's tough. What kind of meat are you eating? I don't know, but I mean, every time we order meat from the store or whatever, 
no matter what we pay for it, we could pay for the highest price beef, right? It's still, I thought you go to Costco for the great meat there. What happened to that? Oh, the, I don't know. Their meat is their meat is. If you get a, a thing of four pieces of meat, one yeah. of them is terrible. Really? Yeah. I mean, I thought you raved uh, about oh, look, Costco. I want a piece of meat that after it's finished, there's nothing on the side that I had to leave behind. You know what I mean? No meat. gristle, no nothing like that. And the Culture fact is that we buy a steak from, for instance, from Stu Leonard's. I like Stu. And, and, and I cook it up, and at the end of it, there's gristle all over the side of the plate, you know, because it, it only maybe 50, 75% of it is edible. So what, what, what kind of cut are you getting? I don't know. Marjorie buys it. But all Maybe I'm saying is that well, your but I've, meat. I've gone to like Whole Foods and I've looked at like the best meat they have there and I'll get a really good cut of meat and I'll bring it home and it doesn't have any, uh, any, any gristle, but there's something else it doesn't have. Taste. Taste. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's because the, the fat gives it the flavor. Yeah. And the fattier the meat, the, be the better flavor it has. Well, it should be marble. The filet is very soft, but it doesn't have a high fat content, and you'll get no gristle. But, Go if, for if it, but, but, it, but it, you know, it, the thing is, the reason that fat, it's marbled with fat. Right. It's, you know, it's not just only big chunks of fat here and there, although it can, you know. Next time I speak with you, I want to know what kind of, what cut of meat you're getting. Well, I'm, I'm not buying meat that, that much. much anymore. I mean, we're uh, we're getting Marjorie orders out now. You know, uh -huh. to, like we we get Instacart, and then she's got uh, I can't remember the other company. The the food kind of comes Grub made. Grubhub, huh? No, Grubhub. No, Grubhub is ordering from restaurants. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. But Instacart, I mean, we I, I order from Costco every couple of weeks from in, by using Instacart. We use uh, Stu Leonard's, uh -huh. uh, which is way Do far away. Do you have away. a Stu Leonard in? Uh, no, in it's, up, it's up in uh, it's up in Westchester. Westchester. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, uh, but so how 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 do they deliver? They from deliver. Westchester? They deliver it. I don't know. They get here, and oh. I asked them once. I said, "What is this? Is it some like kind of Stu Leonard's warehouse down here, or whatever that you go to?" And they go, "No, we go up to the Stu Leonard's up there. That's really fast going back and forth." Yeah. yeah, but anyway, have you been up there? That's a great place. I oh, like we you know we order we uh, get their lobster rolls. Oh, their lobster rolls are just. Do they make that fresh, or do you, do yeah. you bring it? Oh, yeah, it's made fresh. You know what I like about Stu Leonard's? It's <laughs> you're the cattle. Well, yeah, explain Stu Leonard's though, because there are people <laughs> here watching this who have no idea it's, what it's Stu not Leonard's a. It's, is. it's 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 a it's a regular supermarket in that you can find everything: fresh produce, the meats, the fish, everything. The difference is you can't walk up and down the aisles. You go into this. There, there's this one aisle. Cattle. This this cattle pen, which brings you through all the different sections. I think that's genius. Yeah, well, I'll t it's genius, but, and I will usually travel the whole route. There are places you can cut across now. Yes, there are. Like IKEA is the same way. They do yeah. the same thing. But it's IKEA. like you go down this thing, and what they do, which is really smart, is you, you pass by something, you go. Uh, Let's see, do I need eggs? Nah, I don't think I need them today. And then you go down the path a little bit, and they're eggs again. Yeah. And you go, well, maybe I better pick up some eggs. <laughs> you know? Very smart, very ingenious. Oh, I miss Stu Lennon's. Yeah. Costco's ingenious, too, because Costco does something very, very interesting. They change where they place stuff. They oh, everybody does that. They constantly everybody change does. where they place stuff, so you have to go through the entire Costco looking for, I don't know, your Coke Zero or something, which moved from this side of the store to the other side of the store, but you've got to go up and down a ton of aisles looking for it. In the meantime, you're going to be picking up cashews mm -hmm. and uh, uh, potato chips and that, but that, but that, yeah. Trader Joe's does it twice a year. Really? They, they, change, they change the whole, except for the uh, wine and wine and beer, they change stuff constantly. I mean, complete sections. Really, potato chips were over here and snack chips were over here. Yeah, 
half a year later they're at the yeah, other yeah, side. Yeah, exactly. Of the Brilliant. And, and and that's done to make you because uh, right. on your way to trying to find this thing, you may mm -hmm. buy ten other things that you didn't need. Yeah, obviously they can't change where the produce is. But they change where the bread is. They they can't change where the eggs are. But they change where the chips well, the, are, and the, the salsa is, and all that stuff. Yeah, but they they move the soda from one side of the building to the other, if I remember correctly. You know, well, shouldn't they? Anyway, but that's a, but Stu Leonard's I always like because it's just fun. Yeah, you it know, is a fun. It's fun, show. and and I think kids like it too because they like some little animatronic animals and things like that yeah, that right. they have in there and so the, on. The, the Disney of supermarkets. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, and then you go, I got, well, I got to have this, I got to have that. I mean, it, it is really, it's a it's a brilliant market. And there, there's a lot of impulse buying at Stu Leonard's. Yeah, there's no quite question. a few Stu Leonard's now. There's, there's one out in Long Island that Shecky used to go to a lot, you know. I went to a, a, a Stu Leonard's... Um, they had a liquor store in Long Island. Yeah. Wait a minute. He just froze up. Went with my wife one time yeah. to a, a tasting. They had a they had a tasting event. Mm -hmm. And there must have been eighty different tables with different wines and liquors. Oh really? And we got fucked up. <laughs> we couldn't. We had to. We had to wait before we could drive home. It was wow. great. And that was at Stu Leonard's. Stu Leonard's tasting. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Because, uh, you know, here in New York, we have a thing that's kind of unusual that uh, doesn't uh, usually make a hell of a lot of sense. But here in New York, you can't have liquor in the same store as your food. In other words, Costco cannot sell liquor. But if they want to sell liquor, right next door they have a right. liquor store. Right. You but know. they can't sell wine and beer. They can't. Uh, can they sell? No, they can't sell wine. They can? I, they do down here. They, they I, have Costco with wine and beer. Well, and then the well, separate well, down store. there. But but here, I think it's separate separate liquor store for wine and beer. Yeah. I, I don't know about that. Because I don't I remember, remember ever Trader seeing Joe's. beer. I don't remember seeing beer inside Costco. Trader Joe's has beer in, in, in it in New York. Really? The wine store is separate. Yeah. And they don't. Sell, I don't think they sell liquor at the wine well, store. Well, anyway, I, I'm sick and tired of arguing with you. Well, you don't care anyway because you don't drink any of that stuff. So, what do I, you care? I don't drink. You, you, you do. I've been known to. Yeah. You've been known to. Been yeah. known to have a little alcohol once in a while, maybe some marijuana. Yeah. Well, again. marijuana. You know. I'm just wondering now that we've legalized marijuana. How many people are going to die from lung cancer from marijuana? Is they won't it, care. Is it dangerous? I'm sure it's just as dangerous, but but fewer and fewer people are smoking marijuana. People are taking the gummies, and people are taking the chocolates, and people are taking you know the edibles and the yeah, concentrates. I don't like the. I don't, I don't like, even I, smoke I don't, it anymore. I, am I wrong? I don't like the edibles. I just don't think that I have enough control over my high. With the edibles, whereas with the smoking, this is exactly you want to control. You're I know, getting high. I know I, you're not I, getting high. Well, here's what I'm good for. Here's what I I only smoke pot for one reason. I have an, a vape right next to me on my bedside, uh -huh. and I take a puff off of it just before I want to go to sleep. And uh, I have the indica, and the indica it makes you really drowsy, and I go right I go right to sleep. Yeah, but then you 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 don't you don't take it to get high. You take it to to relax and go to sleep. That's yeah, that's right. That's you. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, then that's why you shouldn't have the gummies unless you have indica gummies. Well, the gummies, as I say, the gummies. I just don't feel. I feel with a, a joint, I can control how much I'm taking in. Yeah. What's, what's not to control? It's a five milligram or ten milligram. No, but gummy. I mean, it's more. It's, it's completely controlled. More so than a than a drag know, on. Every it. time I've, I'll tell you what happened. I tell you what happened to Marjorie. She a friend of hers sent her a chocolate bar, marijuana chocolate bar, right in there. Well, she didn't realize how much she was eating. She ate the whole candy bar. Yeah, yeah, but she, she has a high tolerance to start. Wait a minute, not this case. She was oh, stoned really? for three days. <laughs> was yeah. it indica? I, I don't know what it was, 
You know what they say about Indica? Indica in the couch. In the couch, yeah. You ain't moving. You ain't moving. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I mean, uh, it, it, she was she was so blotto from that. And she said, I didn't know you were only supposed to judge by a square. Look at this. What? This is from my dispensary. R- the cup is my from cup. your dispensary? Yeah, from my marijuana dispensary. And it's move. called Move? Move, yes. What is that supposed to mean? I don't know. It's a hipster, hipster marijuana. It, uh, really? Oh, okay. Place, yeah. I, I just, I, I, I don't, I don't know. See, uh, uh, but I mean, I'm, I mean, I used to, I used to smoke pot a lot, you know, when I was younger. But as I've gotten older, I don't care about it that much. Well, yeah. you did a lot of things back then to excess. Did I? As oh yeah, know, yeah, I had a good coke. Ha- you, I had a good you, coke. You Coke habit. You take your one. paycheck and uh, throw it in your nose. It, well, no, I didn't. I was very careful about that. I, I limited how much I would throw in my nose. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. Uh, I, I, I was. In fact, I would cut mine down a bit so that I didn't use it as, you know, t- uh, didn't get as heavy a dose. You uh, cut it with what? A, a, a manit- you, manitol. Are you a pharmacist now? Manitol, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, just so that I wouldn't take the whole thing and I, you know. Now, you were a big celebrity in those in those days of yeah. the, the Well, the it's cocaine. like it's just, it's the old it's the old Robin Williams line, you know. Cocaine habits are God's way of telling you you're making way too much money. Well, that's you that's know. the question I was going to ask. You you were you were a celebrity and during the during the what is it the 80s cocaine days. Did you find that you were uh, providing cocaine for other people, or you got cocaine from other people because you were? I got cocaine from other people, but I would share it. That's what I I would share it. Yeah, you know, but I I figure I spent about oh maybe a a thousand dollars a month on cocaine. I don't suppose that's a lot. You that's, were making that's not a lot. I was making about four hundred thousand dollars a year then. Okay, that's fine. You know, so twelve grand, twelve grand a year yeah. versus four. Was that's God's nice. way of telling me I was making too much money? Yeah, I guess. but I'll tell you what I found out about cocaine. I went down to Miami and I quit. What a place to quit, right? But I quit. Yeah, and it wasn't that difficult to quit. I thought it was going to be. That's and when you you started working in Miami. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then I came back to California, and uh, about a year in, uh, I figured, oh, I'll do just a little bit of Coke because what's got to happen is it's, you, you remember how Coke, Coke was the first time he ever had it? It was terrific, you know? No, I only and, had it once, and, didn't like it. And you so remember enough. the last time you had it, and it was just kind of like, okay, I'm just doing it to maintain myself, right? So it's got to be different if I do it after a year, two years of not doing it, right? I'll get that first initial bounce. No, it's right where you left off. Oh, really? Yeah, it's right where you left off. So, so it was at like, that point yeah. I decided this is not for me. You know, mm-hmm. so. And at that point I think I quit all drugs. I think I quit pot, everything. You know. But you I, kept smoking though. Uh, cigarettes? Yeah. No, I quit cigarettes uh, earlier, oddly enough. Really? Yeah, yeah. What I, was your What was your brand? What What kind of smokes did I, you get? Sherman's Cigaretellos. Really? Yes. What a snob, Sherman's. <laughs> they were, yeah. You can like have a have a Marlboro. I think maybe or, I think maybe they saved my life because they didn't have any additives. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And and cigarettes it must have tasted horrible. Cigarettes here? No, they they had to make them taste good by putting in really premium tobacco. That's and why how, they cost how, how so much. How much more were the Shermans? They were they were pretty. Well, uh, in those days, expensive. they were like uh, two bucks a box or something. But that was when cigarettes were like fifty cents a pack. Right. You right. Know, so, what are, what are, what are, do you know? What cigarettes go for up in New York now? That's I have no idea. I, last time I heard a price, I heard something like twelve dollars a pack. Oh, I thought it'd be more than that, like fifteen. A Maybe pack. I don't know. It may have gone up. Yeah. How do people do that? I don't. I don't. I don't see spending that on cigarettes. And and you really, folks, if you're smoking, stop smoking. It's not good. Yeah, it's not good. You, you know, and it, and, it, and it it makes you smell bad too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, you know, whatever. 
Well, I don't know. I, it, it, we're going to run over a little bit here, but I used to find women sexy who had cigarette breath. Is that weird? Um, that's your thing. That's your thing. Uh, there's no such thing as weird. I guess it just said to me, she's got to be a cheap slut. <laughs> you know, she's got cigarette smoke on her you're, breath. You're, you're going to get uh, you're going to get emails from the women who smoke. Oh boy! How yeah. dare you think I'm a cheap slut just because I smoke? Uh, yeah, right. Well, you're an <laughs> idiot if you smoke. You know. Yeah. So anyway, hey, listen. Uh, always a pleasure talking to you, my dear friend. It is, and uh, I enjoy these little conversations. Here, you know, it's not wasn't rough to do, was it? It never is. No. Never is. Never is. You beat we'll, up on me, I beat up on you. Yeah, and we'll it. Do, do it again in a couple of weeks. Stick around after this is over so we can talk a little bit. But anyway, that's uh, that's uh, that's Albert Reynoso, folks. And uh, glad you could meet him. He's really fun. Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And boy, I love I, he he. Be, we started out by hating each other. Really, uh, we did not like each other. And over the years, we became close friends. I mean, is that amazing? Is that amazing? But anyway, that's uh, Albert Reynoso. I hope you enjoyed him. There were some people out there like Forb and Colossus who were snobbish and say things like, uh, "Remember comedians." How is Steven? You know? Oh, it's not funny. Yeah, right. See. Then somebody said, it's hilarious. Albert, Albert is a funny guy. I agree with you. And I don't like people saying anything negative on this chat about people who are on this program. And the reason I don't like it is I think it's just mean-spirited. And it's trolling. And I don't appreciate it. Okay? So take that, Forbin. You know. Anyway, let me see here. I think. Oh well, we can uh, we can admit some people here. There are only a couple, but you know, we'll do it. And uh, here they come. Uh, let me see here. Here comes. Uh, there's Jeff, and anyway, there's uh, there's see, Josh, well, we can, and, uh, and and here comes Brian. Hello, Brian. Wow. Good. We have to bail out. Josh got on. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. And. <laughs> And here comes Brian. Oh, oh, here we go again. I thought Jeff had finally figured this yeah, thing out. Bail out. Josh He's got on. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Josh, yeah. just kill your browser. Just get mm -hmm. rid of the browser. Get rid of the browser. You mean Jeff? Jeff, get rid of the browser. I think I did it. Oh. Oh, okay. Now get, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you this hey, evening? Uh, Josh is with us this evening, a day early. To what do we hold have this pleasure? Uh, I'm off tomorrow because I had a root canal earlier. So oh, really, oh, they're pleasurable, aren't they? God, it's fucking terrible. You know what's terrible about it? Doesn't hurt. You know, it's not painful. It just takes forever. Yeah, now it's going to be really sore after, but. I have a. I'm very well stocked with you know, opioids. So. Oh I'm, really? Oh, yeah, okay. You know they gave me some more too, but I already had my own. But. It took three hours. <clears throat> wow. Well, and like the whole time they've got fucking shit jammed down your throat. It's like, fuck. <laughs> Is this your first root canal? Yeah, I had oh. never had one. I had oh. managed to make it, you know, over 40 years without needing one. And then, so I didn't really think it was going to be, like, that bad. And, like, the procedure didn't hurt, but it was incredibly uncomfortable. Well, that's the point. I, I uh... Ah, damn. Actually, you know what it was? Years ago, when I would get a root canal, they'd give me gas. Yeah. And I just mm -hmm. go into La La Land. I mean, I, you were awake and everything, but I was in La La Land, and he could do anything he wanted to, and he could take as long as he wanted to. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. It was just, but it was just, it just took. But now it just seems like they I've... take forever to do a root canal. You would have thought by now they would have gotten used to doing them, and it would have gotten faster at them. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, but it, uh, it took forever, so I don't know mm -hmm. really why. I really don't, you know, know anything about that. Uh, I mean, I understood it, I guess, a little bit enough, but they just yeah. did all kinds of stuff, and I mean, it was just ridiculous. Let me see, I just, I, I'm frozen here. Yeah, I saw that, but mm -hmm. uh, sounds like you're still there, though. Here we but, go. Yeah, I had to. They put this like what they called a dental dam, mm -hmm. in, where they like. Str I mean, it was like yeah. fucking. Yeah, I mean, it's like what the fuck. If I'd have known this, I'd rather just spent like twice the money and just had it pulled and then bought an implant. It's like, yeah, yeah you know, you can pull it in ten minutes and then <laughs> you know the implant post and everything can't take this long. I'm just trying to figure out what I got got to do here. It won't it won't fix itself? Well, there I did that, yeah. and now let me see if I can uh, uh, do this. Okay, there we go. Okay. But uh, um, part of the issue that I had with the uh, tooth was like right at the gum line and everything, so they had to do a lot of work mm -hmm. down there. And they said that it was going to be, like, really sore afterwards. And I can tell that it probably would have been had I not taken all these pain pills. But, so, I mean, I guess it was bad, but whatever, it's fine. I mean, I don't mind. It was just, I don't yeah. know, I just couldn't believe it takes that long. I mean, I, what the heck really does take that long? I don't know, but it did. So, wow. you know, and... uh they were there the whole time, so they were working. I mean, you know, it's like they messed around, and they were really nice and everything, so it was fine, you know, but it was just, I don't know, it was just unpleasant. Yeah. I'm, I'm, but I'm off. You, you, know, you I'm guys off. talk with each other. I'm going to try and keep fixing this thing. <laughs> and then also it depends where you get it, because I had to have one in the back, and so my mouth is just like... Well, that's where mine was, too, you know, but... And that's what I'm saying. My jaw was propped open for like three. I mean, you know, I mean, that's, I mean, I don't know. It was just, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of people that have had them. I mean, I had never needed one, you know, before, but it was just, I don't know, man. It was just crazy that it takes forever. I mean, I don't really don't know. And, you, and then you still got to go back and get more stuff done, you know? Yeah. I guess, uh, you know, the permanent crown and all that has to go back and get that all done and everything. So, you know, I mean, plus the original visit where I went in and had it looked at because I was having some pain. Mm -hmm. It's going to end up being like three trips and I mean, all that. But that, that's how the implants are too. The implant, you got to. Well, right. They'll, they'll yank the tooth. And then they, 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 I don't know if they sew it up and they let it that heal. Probably. And then they, they cut it open to put the pin in. Mm -hmm. And then they sew that up and then they let that heal. But when they let it heal, they want to see you right away, like in a couple of weeks, like four weeks, just right. to make sure everything's healing. And then you come in and then they got to do that and the tooth and the, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Take yeah, you're right. But I guess at least with those, it seems like they wouldn't have to go through all that extensive, like that dental dam and all that. Fucking dragging, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's just like, what the hell, man. But yeah, it's over with now, I guess. Hopefully. Yeah. So, yeah. It was just, you know. Implants are expensive here. They're like $10,000 in the Bay Area. No, they're five um, 5000 Thank you. I, I was quoted 10 a couple weeks well, ago. Well, then you got ripped off. I, I didn't buy it. So. Thanks. Yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't I like I your didn't, picture, Alex. You, you, I know you that's uh, the, another part of the room, and it's another camera. They uh, uh, and, the implants here were cheaper than that, but I mean, uh, I really, you know, I didn't have to pay too much for this. So I was just trying to thought I was doing the right thing, you know, but mm -hmm. rather than having it pulled and all that, you know, I was just trying to do the right thing. But after like the first forty-five minutes, I was like, man, I. <laughs> oh, I mistake here, you know. This is. I missed yeah. the first part. Do you have a root canal or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And then they crown it afterwards. Oh, uh, they will. Yeah, there's a temporary there, but. Yeah. Good. What but does yeah, that cost? So, I mean, overall, cost not, not you know. I mean, it's. 
is what it was. I mean, it was just unpleasant, but you know, be okay. So, what is what is the uh, the those two procedures cost there? Where you're at, Josh? Uh, for everything, I think I paid around nine hundred bucks. So, you have dental insurance that pays for part of it. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, uh, good. I don't. I don't really know what they're portion even was i'm sure they'll break it down if i wanted them to they told me what my cost was and i said go ahead you know i, I mean yeah. i couldn't i didn't want to have it extracted and i didn't want it to keep hurting so you know what really choice do you have i guess but yeah that's true yeah i mean you know probably, it was, it's the way it was they're probably talking about twenty five hundred dollars here in the bay area for those two procedures for the the cleaning yeah. and the uh, and the and the crown. Yeah, I mean it was just you know for taking three hours and all the shit they have to do. It's like wow. you, know, you guys owe me some fentanyl or something because <laughs> anybody who has to sit through this shit at least mm -hmm. something like yeah. heroin, cocaine, fucking owe me something for my money. <laughs> but it was fine. Did uh, I've never camera had working? You, you, is it broke? Well, I got this one working. You're here. back now. Yeah, I got this. I got it. It's another. Uh, it's another camera. <laughs> Why you look so short now? Your other yeah, one really. just crap out on you. Hmm. Your other one just crap out. No, you came back a few times it, and it was working. It didn't crap on me, but it 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 did something where it it uh, like uh, got all, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, we had. Uh, I guess since no one probably wants to hear about the dentist, but um, <laughs> the uh, we had that special election Tuesday mm. that mm -hmm. was pretty big. Um, yeah, and I don't really know if people understand the whole background of that, but in Ohio, really for, for forever, over a hundred years, ballot initiatives by the citizens here have taken you know the procedure to put them on a ballot and then you could have a ballot initial initiative during any of these statewide elections you know may november whatever and it would take 50 percent plus one so just a simple majority to amend or change the state constitution via the citizens ballot initiative and it's always been that way well, when the Supreme Court did their deal on the abortion rights, mm -hmm. Roe v. Wade, whatever, you know, recently, groups around the country in many states started saying, okay, we need to wake up and do what we said we were, we, you know, what we should have done all along, and we're, we're going to do all these statewide initiatives. And then those initiatives went into a few other states and they passed, including some conservative states like Kansas, for example and one or two others and they garnered all the signatures and everything and they got one on the ballot for here in ohio so the republican legislature here looks at that and says oh that's going to pass 50 percent plus one it's it, it's passing in all these places they're going to pass it here so what do they do they hurry up and pass a law an initiative that says well, I guess to back up, the initiative that we were going to vote on for abortion rights to codify basically the previous Roe v. Wade language was going to be on the ballot in November. They knew it was going to pass. So they said, what can we do about it? So the state legislature here gets together and puts their own initiative on the ballot, which the legislature here has the right to do, saying that instead of the 50% plus one, they wanted to change it to a supermajority of 60% to change the state constitution and we're not going to put that on the ballot in November with everything else we're going to hurry up and do a standalone election in August just for that thinking what they could do was sneak that in there mm -hmm. and that a lot of people wouldn't show up and vote for a one day election for one issue and that they could change it so the state constitution couldn't be changed and then that stuff wouldn't go through in November and they got whipped here I mean first of all the turnout was incredibly high like four or five million people, and I, I think the state population is like eight, eight and a half, something like that. So, I don't know, it might be more than that, but the turnout was very high, and the initiative lost like 
55, 45, 60, 40, somewhere in that range. I, have, I didn't go back and look at the final numbers. I mean, they called it at like 8 o'clock and polls closed at 7. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, that's good. That kept our state constitution the way that it was. So now in November, we have this initiative to basically add the previous row language into the state constitution, which means, that, you know, then they really can't take it away. So, uh, you know, but the whole time they tried to frame it a million different ways. But I mean, what they did was so sneaky. I mean, it was just I mean, but it really wasn't even well, it's not even sneaky. They did it out in the open. I mean, it was just nefarious. You know, it was just we know this issue is going to lose. So how anti-democratic can we be? Let's go try to make a special election to change the way that we know these people are going to vote in November. Yeah. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. So, but it it didn't pass, thankfully. You know, my wife and I voted. So, so is there a huge campaign to go out and vote? You know, it was a pretty big deal here. Um, so, I mean, what does this mean, though? I, I can't figure that out. What were you voting on specifically? The only thing we were voting on Tuesday mm -hmm. was the procedure for what it took to change the Constitution via the citizens' ballot initiatives. Like, citizens can go and get signatures, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and put an initiative on the uh, ballot that says we want to change the state Constitution or add on to it or whatever yeah. and for forever in order for that to pass it's just been a simple majority 50 percent plus one vote mm -hmm. you know a simple majority and they had proposed to change that from 50 percent to 60 percent and we all watch elections enough mm -hmm. to know that hardly anything ever gets 60 percent right Right. Yeah. I mean, very, very rarely does anything anywhere get 60 percent. But this November, there were two things on the ballot that Republicans can't stand. There was an abortion initiative. And in Ohio, there's also going to be a full legalization of marijuana initiative. They have medical marijuana in Ohio, but they do not have, you know, what do you call it? Uh, you know, uh, just uh, recreational or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. that's going to be on the ballot, too, because they gathered enough signatures. Well, the politicians don't want it to pass. So what do they do? They hurry up and pass a law that says, no, we, we want to change the, the Constitution suddenly so that it doesn't take 50 percent. Now it takes 60 and the citizens voted it down. You know, so mm -hmm. I mean, it's it. But the good news is, is through, you know, Kansas and Ohio and Michigan and uh, and there's like four or five other states already that have done this, they're going to pass these statewide constitutional amendments to basically codify the language of Roe v. Wade, some of them even more liberalized than that. And the good news is there is nothing that the Supreme Court can or will do about it because these are going to be legalized state constitutional amendments and they do not violate the federal constitution. So, so what, what did this mean, though? What I don't good. get is, what did this mean for Roe v. Wade? Did it mean anything, or did it just was it just the process they could use to get rid of vote, Roe v. Wade? Well, I don't know that it meant anything for that, for Roe v. Wade at all. It was just here in Ohio. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the Ohio ballot initiative in November is going to do is basically go back to the way things were in Ohio before the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. And it's basically going to do that by simply taking the language that used to be in the old Supreme Court ruling of Roe v. Wade with uh, however many weeks it was. And, you know, and then even after those weeks, all your exceptions, you know, rape, abortion, you know, life of the mother, you know, the whole run of those. And it's going to put it in our Constitution that that's the law in the state of Ohio now. You know, and, and all it's going to take to pass that this November is 50% plus, plus one, like it always did. And you're probably going to get that because this November will be a midterm. So you're probably going to see pretty good turnout, right? Mm -hmm. And there are going to be a lot of Republican and a lot of Republican women, I think, that still might vote for a Republican candidate for Congress or whatever like that, but are still going to click that yes button 
on that particular abortion right, you know, mm-hmm. because even if they don't even want to tell people about it, in their mind, I think they say, mm, <laughs> you know, I don't know, I, I... I still could get pregnant, you know. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that, you know. So, I mean, mm-hmm. so it'll probably pass. I mean, you know, especially if you if you go off the number of the way that the the ballot initiative failed here. Like I said, it, it got. It, I should probably look it up, but I think it was at least like fifty five, forty five. I mean, it, you know, mm-hmm. that's a pretty good number now. I mean. You know, that's what I'm saying is they thought it was going to be, they thought it was going to pass, you know, so, and because they thought they would see low turnout, they would, they put it in an August election, which by the way, just two years ago, they did away with August special elections and said, no, we can't have those anymore. If there's ballot initiatives, they got to go in November. They undid everything that they had done the last couple of years, all because they thought it would work for them and no one would notice. And, you know, people did notice. I mean, to me, they noticed. But I think, but it's followed a trend. It's followed Kansas, Wisconsin, Michigan. Now it's going to be in Ohio. Um, There's two or three. Vermont, I know, did something. North Dakota. Yeah, so, yeah, right, right. Yeah, so, you know, really, in all honesty, this is the way it should have been all along, is people handling their business by themselves without having to involve courts and when their lawmakers wouldn't get it done for them they would just go do it you know for themselves so i think what is happening is what we suspected might have happened when the road decision and all this was overturned was that if people were really that upset about it Mm -hmm. they would go out and they would do something about it you know and in some of these states they are now i'm sure there's going to be a handful of states where it's probably never going to happen you know, probably. I mean, I don't. I don't know if Alabama and Mississippi are ever going to be able to take that leap. But a lot of these states are. You know, I mean, I hear hmm. Texas is close. Oh, you yeah. know, it's 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 you know, ten years ago it was probably a, a never going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. Or whatever. But it's not so much that way anymore. Hmm. So you know, Georgia ten years ago was probably a never going to happen. I don't know. They throw a ballot initiative on there in Georgia during a midterm or during a presidential election year when they have really good turnout, they might get it, right? So well, you know, it might might well be that the the feeling at least where Roe v. Wade is concerned about the people who want to stop Roe v. Wade as being so pernicious out there mm-hmm. is not a realistic uh, attitude. Right. That that maybe Just maybe people go, you know, I'm a conservative this way, I'm a conservative that way, but when it comes to Roe v. Wade, I'm for it existing. Yeah, because some of these states went way beyond. Well, also a lot of those conservative conservative voters are women. And and, and they're not going to take, you know, who is Roe v. Wade a conservative, you know, a conservative versus liberal? thing or is it is it I mean it is, is it? it is in the large macro sense of political battles mm-hmm. but I think when you get right down to the individual people outside of probably your strong Christian community mm-hmm. I that's what I'm saying is I think there are a number of men and women who are not you know devout religiously etc but who vote with some Republican politics, but on that particular deal, uh, you know, look at what they've tried to do here, which was like six weeks with really no exceptions, and they say, man, that, that, that's, that's too much. I mean, you know, they, they just say that's, that's too far. I'm, I'm 39 years old, and I vote for Republicans and all that, but, man, my wife could accidentally get pregnant, and we could really have... Or, 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 I mean, or, you know, or, I'm or, saying, I mean, they're saying I've already got two kids. Yeah, one exactly. Of 15, I was going to say that. 14. Yeah. We're, we're almost done. <laughs> you know, I got to start over. I mean, you know, I mean, that's what mm-hmm. I'm you know, I know a lot of people my age have got kids that just graduated. You know what? I mean, they don't fucking want to have another kid. 
Right. You know? <laughs> Jeff? I got, I got four granddaughters who are all old. You know, they're in college and stuff like that. They're very risky on this whole business. Right. And their parents really got to make a different decision. Well, if you're lucky enough to live in a state like New York, you know, that it's no problem, you know. But yeah. if you live in a state like Texas where Charlie is, tell them, Charlie. Yeah. Well, what school do they go to? What college in what state? Yeah. But, See, this yeah. changes the world. What, what were you going to say, Charlie? Uh, I, I don't know if y'all seen the testimony that a lot of the women are doing at the legislature uh, uh, testifying against uh, the, the abortion bill here in Texas is... is Women that can't, because of the way the law is worded, doctors won't give them abortions when they absolutely need one. You have a baby born and the ultrasound shows or the x-ray shows there's no brain. So there's no way that baby's gonna survive once it comes out. And they cannot abort that baby because the doctors don't wanna be sued by for $10,000 for a hundred different people. The way the law is worded, it could be. Uh -huh. yeah. And and uh so they have to sit there and bring this dead baby basically the term and the baby's born they, they give her the baby and then the baby dies in her arms because there's no brain it's cruel it is just cruel or, yeah. or drive 800 miles yes, what are we gonna oh, say yeah, alan you had your hand i was gonna make a joke that that's the the, ba the baby with no brain is how they get republicans <laughs> it's not really funny I'm no sorry. it's not <laughs> I, I thought about it and put my hand down. I thought you know, that. I, I just. I mean, these women testifying are, are so sick. They're throwing up, just telling their stories. They get so physically sick. They. they... Yeah. I, I would suspect yeah. I know a lot of people that would vote for that because you know they would say, "I don't really know if we want another child and all that." And, and, and if they did have that come up, a lot of them are probably saying, "You know, we we probably still would go ahead." But the point is, I want to be able for us to make that decision. Mm -hmm. I don't want us to find out, oh, nope, it's been just past six weeks. Sorry. And also, the, you know, the state that, <laughs> that has the most maternal mortalities in, in the, of all the 50 states is Texas. More women die in, childbirth, die in childbirth in Texas than any other state in the country. Even Mississippi and Alabama don't have that rate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, yes, uh, 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 Tony. On a side note, I wasn't, my brother told me this, it's a joke, I guess. It was a joke. I wasn't planning. My mother went, my mother and father, he said, because there's an age gap. They went to a wedding, and my father was drunk. He says, you were definitely not planned. <laughs> but she had me, though, so thank God. Yeah, yeah that was her decision. Yeah, that was her, yeah. You know, she was never not going to have me, yeah. Yeah, right. But this, well, this was the... Either that or two more inches, and you would have been a butt fuck. <laughs> you could be right. <laughs> My father's like, is, uh, I mean, this has kind of been the idea that Bill Clinton had been trying to give Democrats the last couple of years. I heard him talking in, in an interview about it uh, on Morning Joe recently, where he said, you know, I, I think the polls and my experience indicates a lot of these things are really not popular amongst people at the ground level, mm -hmm. but we're never asking them to make the decision at the ground level. We're, we're always relying on Washington politicians or the Supreme Court. And he, mm -hmm. you know, he said, why, why don't you go back to their home base and start getting some decisions made there? You need to get these gun laws and these abortion laws and these marijuana laws and, and get those ideas out of Washington and you need to start beating these people at their own game, you know, and, and, you know, look, Bill Clinton was a successful politician. I mean, even if you don't like him, you would have to admit that some of the stuff that he says is actually pretty smart, you know, so maybe follow some of that advice and it's, mm -hmm. and that, that's what they're doing. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's good. You know, it's just like he said, he realized this when Al Gore ran for president, you know, he said, and 
you know, I'm watching the results come in, and I see that Al Gore loses in Colorado to, to George Bush in that 2000 election, and he loses to George Bush in Colorado by like 10 points, which is a whooping. But in that same state, in that same election, people in Colorado voted to make universal background checks a, a solid deal before you could buy a gun in that state, and it passed like 70-30. Mm-hmm. It's like that was a light bulb for me that said who you vote for for president doesn't always mean who you're going to vote for for some of these one-off issues. Mm-hmm. We can go into these states and beat people, but people wouldn't listen to him or even people on the right who tried to do that kind of stuff. They instead just said, that's a lot of work, costs a lot of money, take a lot of time. We're better off to just let the lawyers and the judges handle it. Well, how's that? That's not been working out very well for us, right? So... It's good to see that they're, they're spending some time and they're spending some money and they're going into some of these states where you would think they would never be able to get something like that passed, like a Kansas, for example. Mm-hmm. And, and they're saying, you know what, we, I think we can get a majority of the people to say, yeah, we want, we want Trump for president, but we also want to be able to have abortion rights in this state. Yeah. Take, yeah. What, take what victories you can get. Make the states just a little bit better you know i mean mm-hmm. and that's that's probably a uh, it's a good idea in my opinion it seems to be working so far speaking of uh we're t- you're talking about roe v wade and of course uh, that begs the question about the supreme court the latest stuff to come out on clarence mm-hmm. thomas is so pernicious oh, yeah. and so horrible i mean somebody should just say let's take a vote here in congress and let's impeach him you know I mean, it's it's almost like the guy looked at it as a a personal bank account. Yeah. You know, that he could draw from any time he needed money or needed something or needed a car or needed a vacation or whatever. So. Yeah, they should at least open up an official an official investigation for a possible, you know, impeachment proceeding. I mean. Because, you know, Clarence Thomas, Justice Thomas, has had this, you know, arrogant, fuck you, I'll get you back, I'm entitled to this attitude, since he was run through the ringer in his confirmation. Yeah. You know, rightly or wrong. But I'm just saying, that's what he has had, and I don't know him at all, right? So this is just me saying, but it's it's like he feels like these things are okay because we fucked him, you know? I mean, oh, <laughs> you know, like, we owe that to him, you know? I mean, it's it, it's like, you, you really worked me over, and now this is okay because, you know, I deserve it or whatever. I mean, you know that he has to know that that isn't right. I mean, you think he thinks he's not going to get caught. Right. right. I mean, I, I mean. Well, almost. It's almost as you know. though he felt he had the right to do it. Yeah. You know. I mean, well, that's what I'm saying, right? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I work for a company now, and I worked for one before that does all this code of conduct training and all this stuff every year. Yeah. That says if I'm a salesman and I'm trying to sell you paint. You can't give me anything more than a free can koozie or whatever without me saying no or reporting it. And I mean, you yeah. know that justice on the Supreme Court knows That's true. that this wouldn't fly anywhere, let alone at the highest branch of one of the branch, the highest point of one of the branches of government. I mean, well, even if it technically or untechnically or whatever wasn't illegal, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just not right. And he knows that it's not right. But mm-hmm. I think like you said he feels entitled to it because what was he feels, what was done to him wasn't right. Mm-hmm. And it's all good now because, you know, he deserves it. Jeff? Yeah, can't the Supreme Court make its decision by those Six of them, or whatever, seven of them, eight. eight, I guess it is now. That goodbye, kick them out. 
Well, they can't. Eight, nine. They can't nine get rid of him. I can't. I don't think they can do that. No, they. I mean, they can't do that. I mean, they, 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 they could buy proxy, maybe. Congress, buy. Congress can get rid of a, a Supreme Court. Yeah, they have to be impeached they? in front of the right. Senate to be kicked yeah, out. Yeah, to, to be removed, that's the only way. I mean, like, I was going to say, you know, don't get me wrong, they could sort of ostracize him from within or whatever and take yeah, away that... things, you know, but they but they can't make him quit. They can't fire him. Mm-hmm. I mean, but but look, the legislative branch can. They have oversight here. They're just not using it. They're not, right. We're not using it yet, but I mean, you know, in, in the time that we live in, in an impeachment mm-hmm. of a big time news, and it comes at a time when we're impeaching presidents at a high rate, and, you know, I mean, it would just look bad and it would look ugly, and it would be bad and it would be ugly, but you know, if something mm-hmm. needs done, something needs done. Yeah. You know, and something does need done. I mean, it ought to be lesson to all of them, you know, that they need to watch themselves pretty closely, but uh, he just doesn't seem to get it, you know. <laughs> he doesn't seem to get it. Right. I, I, like I said, I think he's aware of all of this. He just, I mean, maybe, like I say, I'm completely wrong. I don't know him. Obviously, never met him, but I'm just saying I know that he is bitter about the way that he got to where he's gotten and he mm-hmm. he just strikes me as a person who just can't give it up and just thinks they fucking owe me this you know i want it and i'm allowed to have it and just because i have that job shouldn't mean i can't go on fancy things and all that but you know what it does and that's the job that you asked for and i'm sorry yeah. Well, the fact that he complained about not making any money on this job, and then he'd rather be in an RV park and everything else, and then he gets on a, a, a freaking private jet and everything else. Right. That's also a bunch of bullshit. You know, he's right. he's pulling the wool over people's eyes. He's trying to anyway over the years, <clears throat> and then uh, complains about his salary and everything else. I mean, I don't know. That's it's more than bad optics. Yeah, a lot more than that you gotta, you have to give stuff up to get jobs that you want or whatever. You know, I mean, there are p- people out there that get jobs that come with certain things and give up other things. I mean, right. you know, I mean, all you serve your country, <laughs> all across the spectrum. I mean, do you think that NFL football coaches spend a lot of time with their families? You know, nope. No. I mean, you know, but that's because they got a job that pays eight million dollars a year. You know, uh, so, serious about, passionate about. Right. And you know, these politicians aren't passionate anymore with all the lobbying, all the money that gets flying around. Well, all you know, I, I just think I, I, I've, I've heard that the Supreme Court at one time, in a lot of cases, has been kind of skeezy. You know, there have been periods of time, way yeah. many years ago, but we always looked at the Supreme <clears throat> Court, at least in present time, as something special. You know, as something of extreme uh, dignity and honesty and so on. And we go before them, go before all these honest jurists and say, what do you think? And uh, unfortunately, I mean, a guy like Clarence Thomas has no business being on the Supreme Court with all that he's done. He should have known better than that. You know? If nothing more, because of the the discredit that it brings upon the court, if he's found out doing it, which was going to happen eventually. More now than ever before, because we live in times where we go after people like this. Yeah, and I I think there's a lot of element still there of good quality integrity on the court you know i i don't think that a bad apple can you know we shouldn't let it spoil the entire batch you know but he definitely is a is a problem for them and look i you know we don't know this they're never going to do this in the open we don't know that behind the scenes and i'm sure at least some of them are are probably Mm-hmm. Really ready for him to get the hell out, you know? I mean, you know. Do you think, he, do you think he's going to go? Do you think he's going to go on his own, though? Uh, you know, I don't think so. 
I mean, I doubt it, uh, you know, because I, I, I just, I think he's too prideful for that. <laughs> I mean, personally, you know, look, I'm sure the Chief Justice doesn't want this, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, he's on a real quest to try to Ethics. fix the court's yes. image and integrity and, and thing, and he knows that it's damaged. I mean, I don't think it's damaged so much that we can't trust them to make decisions. I, I, I mean, like I said, I think the element is still there that the court is trustworthy and has integrity, and there are a lot of good people on there and a lot of good people working mm -hmm. there and things like that, and, you know, this issue is front and center, so it makes them look terrible. I don't think it's systemic to the whole legislative branch or anything like that. I think it's it's pretty isolated to him, you know, for the most part. I mean, don't get me wrong, I know there's been some other allegations here and there, some, some other stuff that's obviously much smaller. But, you know, t but to me, Congress should do their job here, and they should say, you know, that's whose job this really is. I mean, it's it's this is Congress's job. I mean, really, it's not the Chief Justice's job. If 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 it were for the Chief Justice to do, the framers would have set it up so the Chief Justice could get rid of the guy. Yeah, they, they didn't think that it should be that way. If you think they should have, well, then you know that's an argument. You know, you can have mm -hmm. or we can have. But they said no. The legislative branch should. They confirm these people. They should take them away. And they said, you know, they should they should do their job. They're just not doing their job, you know. But now maybe that'll change in a few months, or maybe maybe he hangs in there. And then after the midterms, the Democrats have the Senate fifty five forty five or something where they feel more comfortable, <laughs> you know, with making a move. But I, I mean, honestly, and this is not just Democrats. Everyone would do it. I think they're just too scared right now to do it. I think they think if they did it right now that they're gone in the midterms, and I think that their opinion is he can't really, you know, like ruin the country before the midterms. I mean, you know, they just think the cost is the risk or reward there is not, you know, enough for them. Right, hold on a second. Adrian and I are making faces at each other. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? What's she saying, Brian? Says, I'm muted. She's yelling at me. Okay, I'm gonna. You change your face? No, no. Change your face when they go down. There you go. <laughs> there. Now train it again. <laughs> okay. Say good night. Say good night, everybody. Good night. Okay. Good night. Go. 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 What did she say? Go. Go. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good what did she just say? She said yeah, poop. poop. She has to no, poop. No, she just said. She just said poop. Oh, just said poop. I said go oh, poop. Okay. She said I don't have to poop. Right. <laughs> yeah, when you get out of your office, you're gonna find a pile sitting in the middle of the floor. <laughs> you know. So I just changed to the worst camera I own, and it looks better than the other cameras. It's amazing. Oh boy. But yeah, if I if I had to guess, I would say Senate Democrats are just they're just scared because they know that even if they move forward the votes are not there right uh, the, the two-thirds needed for a piece well, it's not, well, well, you right, know, you know it's, you so know they say you can just try well i, I get it you know i mean i don't disagree with you I'm because just saying the republicans I'm, I'm, live with that they yeah, live with I'm, the knowledge that the to, democrats aren't going to do anything because they're afraid of losing yes and that's all i'm saying is i'm trying to sit here in my mind and say if i'm the senate democratic leader and you know, all that, walk me through it, and they're saying it's not going to happen. The votes aren't there. Okay, it's 0% mm -hmm. chance, so why make ourselves look bad coming into the mid? You know, I'm, I'm just saying that's, I'm sure that's what it is, you know. Okay, let me change and, the subject that's, that's the That's the mm -hmm. disconnect between now and our framers, as our framers said, well, people will do the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 guess again. You know, uh, let me uh, let me go to Charlie a second. I want to change the subject a little bit. You know something that pisses me off, Charlie? And I don't know how you feel about this. But they just sent a bunch of people up to the edge of space. What do they call that rim there? It's called, mm -hmm. It's it, there's a name for it. Uh, with the... Uh, uh, huh? 
Low Earth orbit? I don't no, it, 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 there's a name for it. It's it's kind of just the rim of space. It's where we, you leave our atmosphere and you kind of enter space Here, and you start floating. Okay, so they yeah. send a bunch of people up in the uh, in the uh, what do you call it? Virgin Galactic ship? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then, oh, we we're in space. We're floating around for three minutes. What do you mean you're yeah. fl floating around for three minutes? If you're in, you're either in space or you're not. You're not floating around in it for three minutes. And I just think it cheapens the whole thing, don't you? I mean, uh, yeah. I don't really consider that um, being in space. Really, I mean, I don't consider orbit, what, actual orbit. What Bezos is doing with his penis rocket, you know is uh, any more space travel than anything yeah. else. Now, what SpaceX does is space travel. Yeah. You know, they're traveling through space and they go up to the space station. Space station, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but it just it pisses me off because it cheapens the, whole, the okay. whole process. And I'd like for people to have a little more feeling of wonder than, hey, here a bunch of people took a joy ride today. You know, and they were all civilians too. Even the guy who was person who was flying the the uh, plane was uh, wow. a, a civilian. Yes, uh, Alan. So Bezos was in the business news a week or two ago. Bought a big chunk, privately held a SpaceX. Well, he did. Stock, yeah. It's not publicly trans. You know, uh, it's not a publicly held corporation. So he bought into SpaceX. Yeah. Wow. Do you, think smart might, move. do you think it might be a move on his part to finally push uh, Musk out? No, I don't think so. I think it's. A, I just think he's uh, looking for a good investment. Yeah, well, but he's got his own rocket. You and, know. Well, it's not doing what uh, SpaceX is doing. Well, wow. so, supposedly they're expecting, at least NASA's expecting to use Bezos' rocket, you know, but Bezos' rocket hasn't gotten any higher than that I can't remember the name of it now, that rim. That you know? certain atmosphere or something, yeah. yeah Is it the an, exosphere? No, suggest. no, there's a name oh. for it, and it, it, it's, uh, I can't remember the name, but. Uh, I, I don't know, I, you know, I, I think Bezos probably has the money to have SpaceX build him a rocket that'll take him to outer space, and he doesn't want to do that yet. So, or, or they well, won't. no, but he did the. He, it's kind of a cheap hat trick they're doing. Uh, you can get a rocket that can go up that far, and it's yeah. not that hard to make a rocket that does that now because we have the technology for it. So you're saying that Bezos called you, Alex, and said we want to put you in this thing with us? You want to go for a ride? I, 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 uh, I don't know if I would consider it now. I mean, if SpaceX tomorrow said you want to ride in our thing, I'd go. Yeah, in a, go in a to the space station. You could broadcast from the International Space Station. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, well, they've, got those, they've got those zero G planes you can go up there, right? Yeah, yeah that's that's what we're talking about. Well, look, that's, when, that's, when it comes to satellites, they have two different levels of in in distance. They have low level orbit, high level orbit. I, I never heard of the not being in you know if you get out of earth's atmosphere and you're in space you're in space i didn't know that there was <laughs> well they, they, okay, they, was, there is a they, they only go up to the the place where you suddenly are weightless okay they don't go beyond that well that could be anywhere you could fly up a hundred thousand feet and and as long as you're flying a parabola you're weightless well y yes you can create the weightlessness but you can't go somewhere where you're weightless just by the lack of gravity. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I hear Mars. That's why. That's when you're orbiting the Earth. That's when you're truly weightless. Is because you're you're flying in such a way that when the Earth pulls you down, you're actually flying around the edge of the Earth. Yeah. You yeah. don't actually go go to the ground. Well, you're in an orbit. Yeah. 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 But these things don't even go into an orbit. They're not even suborbital. No, not the ones that they were talking about. The one that, that that William Shatner went up in didn't go into orbit, no. No, it just goes up, hangs out there for about a minute or two. You yeah. know, you float around, you go, wee, and then then Bezos gives you your astronaut wings, you know? 
Uh, and I, I just think there's something it, it, that, that had to be something for uh, for for uh, William Shatner. All the Star Trek movies and getting oh yeah actually to actually live long enough to get on the edge of space. Yeah. Not many people will get that opportunity. Well, you know, we were, oddly enough, we were pretty much traveling into space by the time uh, Star Trek came out. Yeah. You know, yeah, we were orbiting, we were yeah, they came out in 66, and so, yeah, we had orbited the planet. Right, we were on the moon by 69. Yep. And uh, when did uh, Star Trek come out the first time? 63? 66. 66? Yeah. 66. Yeah. yeah. So we were we were in space by then. Yeah, so except he wasn't in space. No, but what I'm saying is, you said that you know he must in his time to be able to see that. Well, we saw it. It's just that we we didn't we didn't really commit ourselves to it. You know, we had a president who said we want to get there before the Russians do, and once we got up there before the Russians did, that was it for us. Yeah. You know, yeah. people are gonna. <laughs> that president was Kennedy. Yeah. yeah, 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 you know, and you have to say to yourself, why didn't we go back? Why didn't we do more? Why did we stop there? You know, and it was there were a lot of people down here on Earth saying, oh, we have more important things to do here on Earth. Yeah, but we have more important, we have just as many important things to do in space. And that's mm -hmm. the thing, the thing they never got, you know. And by the way, you know, NASA's trying to juice up America to go to the moon and colonize the moon. And do you think most Americans care about that? They really don't. They should, but they don't. Yeah. I mean, um, you want to, you know, you, you're, you're lucky, Charlie. If you can live to be like 90, maybe you'll see somebody land on Mars. Yeah. But I never will. And the reason I never will is because they stopped doing anything in space. Once they came up with the shuttle, it was like NASA shipping and hauling. And that was yeah. about it for like 30 years. Yeah, I even saw a picture of the little craft that they're going to take down to the moon, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I even was like, damn, it looks like the original. I mean, with... Newer no, they, they, what the, the, the plan is, the plan is that SpaceX is actually going to land one of their super rockets on the moon. Well, I don't know. I just saw the little module that's supposed to Yeah, I saw that too. Same you, thing you, well, that the correct, Apollo program used with, you know. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. Whatever, I Char guess. Charlie would know this. Correct me if I'm wrong, Charlie. Um, China. They've landed on the moon, haven't they? Not a man space. No, flight. but they've landed they on landed, the moon. They landed a, a robot. Rocket. Yeah, and they had and they yeah. had a rover. Does anybody know that? I didn't know, didn't know it, did you? Ru yeah. Has Russia done it yet? No. They crashed into the moon. I don't think Russia's actually landed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, Alan. Alan. According according to NASA, the levels from the lowest to highest major levels are stratosphere, uh, met, metrosphere, thermosphere, e exosphere, and the edge of outer space. Uh, That's all they call it. Yes, yeah, just the edge yeah. of outer space. No, but there's, there was a term that I've heard associated with. They said we went up to the blah blah blah. Okay. Is it the Carmen line? The Carmen line, that's it. Okay. Yeah, okay. I I'm not familiar with that. Yeah. Yeah, they take it they that's what they did yesterday. They went up to the Carmen line. Okay. And now at that point that's you the edge of space. Yeah, that, okay. at that point you start floating. Uh. And they go up there to float. They don't go up there to do anything else. You know, are they on well, a, they stay up there for a few And then minutes. they come back they and they around. give them their astronaut wings. What? <laughs> that's gonna be be big news to Alan Shepard, you know? Yeah. You know, it wouldn't take that much more energy just to put him up there in the low Earth, Earth orbit and I stay don't... up there for, you know, yeah, but three did, or four orbits. Do they have to come back to the atmosphere, like the shuttles and all that stuff, though? Is it a bigger risk? Coming back? 
Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, going the, going that going that much further. Uh, you know, because obviously is, he's not doing it for a reason. Well, what you with have re-entry to, and all that. Yeah, I don't re-entry, know. Re-entry, <laughs> you have to be able to. I don't know if re-entry of that plane is the same as re-entry, say, for a SpaceX craft. It's right. probably not. Yeah, Problem no, because you have to need heat shields of some sort. Yeah, the heat shield, like on you know, you and have speed. a risk of the heat shield failing, like on channel yeah. twelve thousand yeah, miles an hour coming back into Earth's atmosphere. You, you can't just go up there, and touch it, and then come back. You got to go up, go deep in, and then come flying then back come out. Flying yeah. back yeah. out, yeah, because yeah. you got to grab gravity. Do any of you uh, watch uh, uh, what's her name, uh, Harley Quinn? I didn't the, start watching the cartoon watching. series. Oh, the last God. episode, they had a rocket that looked just like Bezos's, but it looked like a penis. Okay, which made it Bezos's rocket does. In fact, does. the swoosh on uh, for Amazon looks like a penis. I mean, he has some kind of subliminal thing there. Yeah. But anyway, uh, the rocket takes off, and it's got you know this the crown on the top of it, and all of that. And what comes out the back of it to shoot it into space? Sperm. <laughs> Phil's probably going to get jealous now, Alex, if huh? he is this. Phil's going to get jealous. Who's going to get jealous? Phil. Why, why show would he like be jealous? In his treatments. Why, why, why would he be jealous? I don't understand. Yeah, why would he be jealous? You know, I guess. Well, maybe you're right. What? I don't know what you're talking about. No, but remember Nobody you said you couldn't get the pee-pee hard? I'm guessing that the bees also has got a big thing like in Blaze. And I guess oh, oh, he... oh, you mean uh, Phil yeah. has to get shots in his penis? Yeah, and... I still find that funny. I told him to tell you that. but <laughs> Yeah, you thought root canals were painful. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how was that. You know, uh, but... Uh... I told, yeah, I don't know. I, I... <laughs> I think I'd just tell you where the bomb was. Just don't stick anything in, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Say anything you want to know. Don't, I don't know who would yeah. voluntarily. I don't know. I <laughs> but getting back to where we started off, i got to tell you, root canals are oh, arduous. Yeah, root arduous. Yes. Uh, I don't understand, you know, what it's supposed to be. Why it can't be better by now. You know, it's been many years. <laughs> it seemed, uh, yeah, it was a little... I mean, the last time I went and got one, uh, I was kind of yelling at my dentist. I was saying, to, yelling at her, do you think you could speed this up just a little bit? Yeah. Not if you don't want it to get infected. Yeah, I guess. I guess. It takes time to get down in oh, there and, and the, clean up. And then it's sometimes if it's, a big, if it's a big tooth, it can take five visits. Uh, really? Did they do all yours in one day, uh, they did mine, yeah. That was thirty years ago. Yeah, I, I mean, I went in originally to got to got you know looked at, you know, diagnosed or whatever, mm -hmm. and then, you know, they told me that you know my options and that's the one I chose. So, that was last week, and then mm -hmm. you know they had me take anti antibiotics for okay. a week, and then I went in today and they did the procedure, and it has a temporary crown. And then they took the mold to make the permanent one. So yeah. in a two weeks or so, I got to go back and they'll take this one off and put that one on. But they, they acted like that wouldn't be that big of a deal, you know, like. Right. Wouldn't they got to go into all the pulp chambers and the nooks and crannies and that, you know, in the tooth and stuff and clean yep. out the debris. And it takes time. <laughs> I've had like three of them. Nothing. Yeah, I just took. <laughs> I've had six. <laughs> yeah. Gee, now the theme won't I mean, play. It's like I was going to tell you, I'll tell you tomorrow. Oh, hold it's on like a second. Shit. The theme won't p play now. Oh, boy. <laughs> what is one thing always or another something. tonight? What? It's always something. It's always something. Let me see if it plays now. Let's see here. There we go. It's playing now. Hey, listen. Thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate your participation tonight as always. Josh, always a pleasure to have you here. Brian. Gosh, you and your lovely daughter. I think she she looks like a porcelain doll sometimes yeah. when she's there. She's really, you know. I as I say, you know, keep a keep a big keep a gun, <laughs> keep a gun by the door, you know, or a baseball bat or something. Uh, Alan, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you, Tony. 
And thank you very much to the lovely and attractive uh, Charlie Wallace. And finally, our old friend Kevin, who's hanging out there. Good to see you again, Kevin. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. There they go. Okay. Anyway, gee, this camera looks pretty pretty good, all things considered. Boy, I'm, I'm amazed. And this is the worst camera I own, okay? Well, so anyway, listen, uh, Jack Bishop is next. Uh, most of the same station. I'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody.